We now want to solve the band minimization problem. This is still the second part, the shape step of our topology shape matrix approach. We have defined what an orthogonal representation is, how to check if it is correct, but not yet how to find one where the number of bands is minimized. And that we want to do now. So the problem that we have in general is the geometric band minimization problem. When given a plane graph with maximum degree 4 and a combinatorial embedding together with the outer face. And we want to find an orthogonal drawing where the number of bands is minimized between all drawings that preserve the embedding. But since we don't talk about drawings yet, but only about representations, instead of doing the geometric band minimization, we want to solve the combinatorial. We have the same input, but instead of finding an orthogonal drawing, we want to find an orthogonal representation. And to solve this problem, we want to make use of the network flows that we just defined. And the idea is that the flow represents the bands. So we want to have one unit of flow for every pi over 2 or every 90 degree angle that we have. Then we must have edges from vertices to faces where we count what are the angles that we have between the edges at the vertices. And we must have flows from faces to other faces where we count what are the bands on the edge between them. And we know from our restriction that it has to be the same on both sides. But that's perfect, because if, say, we have a flow of two shooting from one face to a neighboring one, then that only means, well, we have two right bands on this side and two left bands on the other side. So we can model this very well with flows. And that we want to do now. So let's again have a look at an example. We have outer face, we have three inner faces, and we define a flow network on this. The vertex set of the flow network are all the vertices we have in the graph and all the faces. Now we have edges from a vertex to a face if the vertex lies at the face. So here I'm a bit more precise between E and E prime if it lies between E and E prime on this face because it is again on the face here and then we get a second edge around this. So we don't have a simple graph, but we have a directed multigraph. And that's important because we have angles here and we have angles here, and we have to count both of them. And then between two faces the chair and edge, like these two here, we also have directed edges, but in both directions. Now, the flow that we have on these edges that's supposed to describe the bands. So if we have a flow of 1 going from here to here, then that shall tell us that here we have a 90 degree angle. If we have a flow of 2 going from here to here, then here we have a 180 degree angle. On the other hand, between the faces, if we go from here to here with a flow of 1, then that tells us that we have one right band at G. So the edge E has one right band on this side. We have three flows here, and then this tells us we have three right bands on this side. And on the other hand, if we have a flow of four from G to V, then that means we have four right bands on the other side. So three here, four here, would tell us if we look at it from the side of G, we have three right bands that we are on the incoming ones, and four left bands that are the outgoing ones. So let's try to define this. For every vertex, we can give four angles to our faces around it. We have four 90 degrees angles at every vertex, so this is the production that we can have. For every face, what is the production that we have here? Let's count all the angles that we have from the vertices. Every vertex will give that much flow to our face. We have five vertices here, and this sums up to exactly a six. And this is very similar to the number that we had earlier. So if you have a k-gon, then the sum 
of the degrees in the k-gon is pi times k minus 2. And pi corresponds to a flow of 2. So what goes in here is 4 minus 2 times the degree. And if we sum up all of this, is the sum exactly 0? Well, you can easily show with order that it truly is. I will not do the calculations here, I will leave that up to you. Now what about the edges? We still have the edge from the vertex to a face here. What are the lower bound, what is the upper bound, and what shall be the cost of this edge? In the cost, we want to count the number of bands that the edges will have in the end. What do you think? Well, at this vertex to this face, we have either 90, 180, 270, or 360 degrees, so we have a 1, 2, 3, or 4. So our lower bounds are 1 and 4. But whatever we do, this doesn't create any bend on an edge, so the cost is a 0. What about the other edges between the faces? What are the lower and upper bound here? Well, this tells us the number of right bands. This can be in no right band, but it can also be many, many, many. So the lower bound is a zero and the upper bound is an infinity. And every right band we get gives us a cost of one. It costs exactly one band. So the cost function here is a one. So we only model the number of bands here. We don't model in which order they appear. But that is fine for us, and in the exercise you will prove why this is the case. Let's have a look at an example. We have this graph, we have our vertices, and we have three faces. We have the edges from vertices to faces. And they have lower bound 1, upper bound 4, and cost 0. So face 1, we have these edges, face 2 these, and the outer face these. And we have the edges between the faces with lower bound 0, upper bound infinity and cost 1. There are even two here because we go through two edges and we have a bunch outside here. Now every vertex here has a production of 4 and every face has a consumption by the formula that we calculated earlier from the degree of the face. And now we want to put a flow here. So let's say we put a flow of 1 here we put flows of 1 here, and 3, 2, 3, 3, 2 here. And we can check if our property is sold. So for this vertex, we have 4 flow leaving. For this also, clearly for every vertex, we have 4 flow going out. So the production is met here. And for all the faces, here we have 4 coming in, that's fine. Here we have 3 coming in, but also 1 going out. So this is minus 2, this is fine. And here we have 1, 4, 6, 9, 12, 14 coming in, so it's also fine. So we get a valid flow here. And again, these VF flows tell us what is the angle at this vertex. And this one here is one band on the edge. This is outward, so it's a right band here. So this is a valid solution. That means that we can find an orthogonal representation and then an orthogonal drawing for it. So let's focus only on the edges where there is some flow. And if we want to draw this, there's exactly one face face edge that has a flow on it that goes through this edge here. That means this edge here is a band and all the other edges have no bands at all. It's clear to see that this must happen here because we have a triangle and we cannot draw a triangle without a band. So we have right angles here, we have right angles inside the triangle but one band here and on the outside we have larger angles. And one drawing or one representation that we could get from that looks like this. So we have modeled our problem as a flow. And what we have to prove is that this modelization is correct. So we have to show that if a plane graph has a valid orthogonal representation with k bands, then this flow network also has a valid flow with cost k and the other way around. Let's start with the backwards direction. So we have a valid flow with cos k and we want to construct an orthogonal representation with k bands. How do we do that? Well, we take at every vertex the numbers 
and multiply them with pi over 2. That gives us exactly the angles. And at the edges, we have some flow that goes through it from each side. That gives us the number of right bands and then the incoming gives us the number of left bands. So for the description of this edge, we can just put a bunch of right bands followed by a bunch of left bands. And then on the other side, we also have the right bands first and then the left bands. So we just pick this order and then we see where we get. So we have to show that with this transformation, all our properties for the orthogonal representation hold. Let's go through them. For the first one, we have to show that the description corresponds to the embedding and the outer face. That's pretty clear. That's the way how we defined the network. So we don't have to do anything here. Second, for every vertex, the sum of incident angles is 2 pi. In our network, every vertex has a production of 4. Every number corresponds to pi over 2. So if we take these and we sum it up, then we get exactly 2 pi at this vertex. Now what about the edges? We have to make sure that for every edge shared by two faces, the sequence of on one side is reversed and inverted the sequence on the other side. On both sides, we count first the number of right bands and the number of left bands. So on the one side we have lots of zeros and lots of ones. On the other side, in the other directions, we also have lots of zeros and lots of ones. So the inverted works. But, and then the, the number also match that comes from the flow. If we have five outgoing flow on one side, we also have five incoming on the other side. So if we have five right bands here, then we have five left bands there. So these completely match and we also have this property. And now for every face, we have to show that this number here, this is from the angle sum and in the exercise you can prove that if you sum everything up, you get exactly these numbers. Now what about the other direction? We have a valid orthogonal representation with k bands and we want to construct a valid flow with that cost. There we just go the opposite direction. So at every vertex as a face, we just take as flow the angle divided by pi over 2. And between two faces, we just count what are the number of right bands and that is the outgoing flow and what is the number of left bands that is the incoming flow. And if we do that, then we have to show that it is both valid and has cost k. So we show that these properties that we had for our flow are satisfied. Let's start with these edges between vertices and faces. Here every value must be between a 1 and a 4. That comes immediately from the way we choose it because we just take the angle divided by pi over 2, so this is fine. What about the flow and edges between faces? That has to be between 0 and infinity. And that's clearly the case as we just choose it as the number of zeros in the orthogonal representation of this edge. So this cannot be negative. Then we have to check the production and the consumption. So at every vertex it is clearly a 4 because of the way that we choose it. We just take the angles, if we sum them up they get to pi, so here we get a 4. And every face does this hold. That's exactly the same proof as we did in the previous part um, that you also do in the exercise. All these capacities are fine, so the capacities, deficit, demand coverage work out. The only thing that's left is that we get exactly the cost k. So we have k bands. For every of these bands, there is exactly one flow going through one of these edges. And these are exactly the edges that have a cost of 1. So we get exactly a cost of k here. So from this theorem it follows that the combinatorial orthogonal band minimization problem for plane graphs can be solved with an algorithm for the Minkos flow problem. And Gart and Tamasia showed that this problem we can solve 
in order of x star to the 3 over 4 times m times square root of log n time, where again, this is the size of the minimum cost flow. And in the special case that we have here, we have at most two n edges, and we need at most order of n bands. This here can be replaced by an n, this can be replaced by an n. So we get n to the 7 over 4 times square root of log n time. And for a long time that was the best known solution, but then it was improved by Cornison and Karrenbauer with the result I showed you before, so we can do it in order of n to the 3 over 2 time. However, this really depends on the embedding that we chose before in the first step. And if we don't have that, we are, if we are also allowed to change the embedding, then this becomes an mp hard problem. And that's something that happens a lot in problems in graph drawing. If you're given an embedding, then you can solve something efficiently. If you're not given the embedding, and you have to find one, then it becomes NP-hard.